Staying dry out there, boss? Yes, sir. It's Gore-Tex. Cool gloves. Thanks. The Gore-Tex. Waterproof boots? <laughs> Gore-Tex. Hey, um, do you have any condoms? Oh, sure, buddy. It's Gore-Tex. How sure are we about this? Gore-Tex is a waterproof and breathable fabric. And so goes the byline that W.L. Gore has been pushing for the last 50 years. So it will be no murder to put this Gore-Tex bag over 44's head, right? Because the Emperor's clothes are so waterproof and breathable, right? You're all completely comfortable, right? Maybe it's time to forget about what Gore-Tex is supposed to be and talk about what it is. Polytetrafluoroethylene. Some carbon, some fluorine, repeated with about as much variation as the content on TikTok. That's it. But PTFE has some convenient properties. It's hydrophobic. It's non-flammable. It has an extremely low coefficient of friction. That's why polytetrafluoroethylene is more commonly known as Teflon. But how did they form this into a jacket? Well, first, W.L. Gore quit his job at DuPont's Teflon plant. No coincidence. Then he had a son. Then his son grew up stretching Teflon rods until they broke. One day he got fed up, jerked his rod in anger, and became a billionaire. Well, uh, some guys have all the luck. See, expanded polytetrafluoroethylene is a distinct physical state that is 70% air. That has the properties of Teflon, but many small pores that are smaller than a water droplet. So in theory, the air goes through, water does not. This is demonstrable in a lab. Here I have Gore-Tex stretched across a tube, which is filled with water and pressurized to 40 PSI. Now this is equivalent to a 28,000 millimeter column of water so yes, it is waterproof in the lab. And here I have Gore-Tex stretched over a cup of absorbent beads in a humid room. After a convenient eight hours, yes, it is breathing in the lab. But when I go into a very real rainforest in my very thousand dollar jacket, I mean, I guess it's breathing? I guess I paid half my paycheck for this thing, so I guess I'll shut up and assume it's working. Now, fortunately, there are a few canaries out there who will chirp. Why am I still sweating in this? See, advertising Gore-Tex as waterproof and breathable is the sneakiest of lies. It is waterproof, it is breathable, but it isn't and. Air molecules do not simply drift back and forth across borders as if they didn't exist. They're not Europeans. Now, physics wants a difference in pressure or humidity to push air through. Without that motivation for flow, well, not much breathes anywhere. So when the world is raining, the environment is humid, just like my sweating body is humid. And if there's no humidity differential, there's no breathing. Well, one should truthfully say Gore-Tex is waterproof or breathable. It breathes when it's dry, it waterproofs when it's wet, but not really both at once. Let's even take an ideal scenario. Your body is incredibly hot and humid, and the environment is cold and dry. And that's the biggest pressure and humidity differential we can get. And look, you can see the Gore-Tex breathing. But for some obscure reason on this dry day, you still need waterproofing. Well, as soon as the jacket is wet, that blocks our differential. Your body's vapor is gonna hit the layer of water, recondense, and fall back in. See, Gore-Tex cannot substantially breathe while it's holding off water. The only way to paint over this problem is with DWR, a durable water repellent that encourages the garment to bead off rather than wet out. But if my garment beads water perfectly, then 
Well, why do I need Gore-Tex? With an outer layer that hydrophobic, I might as well clothe my body in a fucking sheet. On the one hand, I admit it's neat to have a garment that does two jobs in two types of weather, but on the other hand, even at its most waterproof, Gore-Tex is not that waterproof. Even at its most breathable, it's not that breathable. You could tenably claim to be better off with a wool sweater and a garbage bag. So how did Gore-Tex get so famous? It's Gore-Tex. <laughs> you know about Gore-Tex? You like saying Gore-Tex, don't you? We all do. When Bob Gore discovered the expanded state of polytetrafluoroethylene, which was more of a natural discovery than a true invention, he nonetheless was awarded the patent. You're not supposed to get patents for natural discoveries. Imagine if Neil Armstrong patented the moon. But whatever, EPTFE became a patent, one of the most cited patents of all time, outperforming true inventions like GPS or inkjet printing. With their freshly fenced corner of the physical world, W.L. Gore set about exploiting it. Any manufacturers hoping to license Gore-Tex were forced to use Gore-approved machinery, fabricated and leased by W.L. Gore, of course. They were forced to buy Gore's seam tape, forced to put Gore-Tex in the name of the product, to hang a black triangle on the tag, to emboss Gore onto every damn item. And because it was illegal to make EPTFE any other way, Gore-Tex became a household name. Today they own 70% of the waterproof breathable market, which is estimated around a billion dollars. And the stupid thing is, they don't even own the patent anymore. It expired in 1998. For the last quarter century, anyone can make what we think of as Gore-Tex. But it turned out not to matter, because Teflon turned out to be one of those forever chemicals that f the water table for the next millennium. Oops, it's rather unpopular with outdoorsy folks. So Gore switched to making membranes from expanded polyethylene and polyurethane. Ironically, both chemicals that were long in use by other membrane manufacturers trying to circumvent Gore-Tex's predatory PTFE patent. It's poetry. To say that modern Gore-Tex is a knockoff of its own historical knockoff is extremely unpopular. So I'd like to thank Insta360 for sponsoring this video such that we can afford to burn a most expensive bridge. See, the camera that looks everywhere has unrivaled selfie stabilization. It can always grab more or less of the frame to compensate for my movements. Of course, such a long stick is never easy to mount. That's what she said. A four foot lever will make even the 180 gram X3 seem huh, too heavy. So my job got a lot easier when Insta360 released their next generation motorcycle bundle. The new clamp uses no ball joints, so there's nothing to rotate out of position. And with the new wrench, I can really torque it down. The result is a stable third person view that amazingly requires no third person or even second. Well, Gore-Tex hasn't invented anything this unique since 1977. See, we tested a cross-section of the motorcycle market's breathable membranes. They all work, they're all way cheaper than Gore-Tex, and two actually work better. So why don't we have a competitive market? And that's the question that the EU and FTC subpoenaed for. Gore is suspected of using illegally aggressive business tactics that violate antitrust laws. Allegedly, whenever a company tries a cheaper or better third-party membrane, Gore yanks the licenses from their entire catalog. Ah! Manufacturers might be angry enough to file anonymous complaints, but they're also too terrified to lose Gore. Not while consumers see this as the hallmark of outdoor quality. Case in point, I have a Dainese Tempest 3 and a Dainese Carvemaster 3 Gore-Tex. This one costs $550, this one costs $1,000. This one uses Dainese's in-house D-Dry membrane, this one uses, no points for guessing, Gore-Tex. The jackets are functionally identical. If anything, I breathe marginally better in the cheap one, but Dainese cannot sell their flagship without licensing the Gore-Tex badge because consumers will not pay top dollar until they see it. We are the problem. Our market is artificially inflated because we demand 
to buy a thousand dollar name tag that no longer means anything special. And Gucci does nothing unique with their manufacturing, but they are a very successful marketing company. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching and thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. And please don't buy one if you lack the need or the finances, but if you do, click in the link below, we'll comp that motorcycle mounting kit.